Ladies and gentlemen, in the green corner, in the yellow corner. Friday Fight Night, in association with StansPoker.com. He always looked the part, and how Isham Pickering has put his career together at Super Bantamweight. European and Commonwealth champion. But the British champion is Michael Hunter. Younger, unbeaten and full of confidence. So is it his time to shine? They've both been good to watch, but with so much at stake now, who can show the winning edge of a true champion? And on Friday Fight Night, look how much is on the line. British, Commonwealth and European Super Bantamweight titles. It's Pickering against Hunter, live and exclusive from Hartlepool. And a hot reception seems assured. Hunter's hometown fans massing outside an hour and a half before the doors opened. Oh, how they have waited for this night to give Pickering, a man who has fought in some pretty hostile places already, a welcome to the northeast he won't forget. The Borough Hall may be tiny, but it is also raucous, packed, noisy and volatile. All in all, a crowd aiming to play a full part in this one. Yes, this could be special again tonight, and once more from Sky Sports on Friday Fight Night. Three big titles on the line. Now, you know, Glenn always said to us, just bring the big matches to the northeast, and we'll do the rest for you. He has obliged. We have a fantastic atmosphere here tonight. But first, Ed Robinson on two men with all the credentials. Champion against champion. Tonight's triple title clash between Isham Pickering and Michael Hunter looks something special. It's a big domestic fight, I'm really looking forward to it. Michael Hunter's unbeaten. It's uh, absolutely mass massive, you know, I've been waiting for a long time for this, uh, maybe it's two years. Pickering's world rated and at his peak. It is stopped, it's over, and Isham Pickering, he's on a roll. I do rate him, I have a deal the most respect for him. Uh, I think he's a very good boxer. But he hasn't had it easy, rebuilding from some vicious setbacks, including a first round blitz, at the hands of Maurizio Martinez in his first world title shot. Knocked out in round one. Let's hope he's all right, Nishan Pickering. To come back from it, I feel pretty proud of myself because, I mean, I did get knocked out, you know, and it, it, was quite a, it was a bad knockout, you know. Lessons learned, and now stronger than ever, he'll need all his mental toughness against Hunter, who's young, hungry, and extremely ambitious. That's another big win for Michael Hunter, who looks an emerging force. I just hope it, it, it just all falls into place and uh, that I end up being a three-title three champion. Hunter's an old school fighter who runs the Sands and trains in a gym that's far from luxurious. Still undefeated, the local crowd pleasers battled hard to re-establish the fight game in the northeast and enjoys massive local support. I just hope, I just hope I can give them the rewards that we've, uh, we've been waiting for and the British who in the Commonwealth. But Pickering won't be intimidated, having brave fanatical fans in Spain to defend his European belt against the previously unbeaten Miguel Malon in June. I boxed in Spain in front of three and a half thousand Spaniards and it was very hostile. And so, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm confident and it's not going to distract me at all. It's a fascinating pairing between two of Britain's brightest talents that really could go either way. I have a lot of the most respect for them and uh, I just, I just, I'm ready to put the gloves on any time and let's go to war. To me, it's my make or break fight and really probably it is to him as well. But um, when I beat him, he can always come back to a European title after I move on. Well, there's Bravado from you away from home. But he does know he's in a real fight tonight, Pickering, doesn't he? Well, he needs that bravado, you know, all fighters do, but he does know it's going to be a tough fight. He knows he's coming in the lion's den, but also he knows that Hunter's got a, a tremendous background. You know, he, he served his time in the amateurs. He was a much better, much more accomplished amateur than Pickering was, and he knows you know, he's undefeated. It's been slow and steady for Pickering, and he referred to the setbacks along the way, Glenn, but 
as we start now, can he claim to be the finished article going into this big test? Yeah, I, I think he is. I think he's done tremendously well in five years since he was blast, blasted out by Mauricio Martinez. He's come on wonders, and I think yeah, it's a real success story of Isham Pigram, how well he's done. He's going to have to show his strength, and not just physically, but also mentally here. Glenn, you've been taking a look at how both men can win this. Of the two, Pickering possesses the more skill. He's a typical Brendan Ingle fighter who relies on quick reflexes to land his punches from an orthodox angle. Hunter likes to throw straight punches. He has a strong raking jab followed by forceful right hands. Pickering likes to change stance during fights, changing from orthodox to southpaw and back. If Pickering gets into a rhythm, he may be too good. Hunter will look to maintain a high work rate, applying constant pressure, and have Pickering thinking defense rather than attack. Of the two, Pickering looks the harder hitter. Even though less than half his wins have come through stoppages, his increased power recently has seen him hold six of his last seven. Hunter's own recent form has seen him stop four of his last five, but those shots tend to be sharp rather than really powerful. Hunter will have to rely on throwing punches and bunches to overwhelm Pickering. British champion Michael Hunter, let's not overlook that, and he is the unbeaten man, Glenn. Is he ready to make this jumping class? Well, it, it is a bit of a step up class. A step up, I think he's ready for. I think you know, he's got the mentality. As long as he doesn't rush in too much early on, you know, sometimes he, he's too keyed up, he's too fired up. As long as that's not a danger, I think he can win. Thank you, Glenn. We're all set here, and it's a big night, not just for boxing fans in Hartlepool, but also for some of the men who made the Northeast tradition in the ring, like Brian London, heavyweight hero of the 60s. George Feeney is with us tonight, working indeed. So too is brother John, simultaneously British champions they were, of course. And the man who guided them both, George Bowes, is also here. Commentary from Adam Smith and Jim Watt. And our master of ceremonies, John MacDonald. Please welcome to the ring now, from the Hartley Pool, it's Michael Hunter! City's biggest boxing night in the last 50 years as the hugely popular British champion Michael Hunter aims to become a triple title holder and these fans Jim just may help him. Yes, I think they will help him. Mean, sometimes boxing at home can be a, a problem early because you can be too eager to impress and make some early mistakes and against an opponent like Isham Pickering you can't afford to do that. But I'm sure with his experienced corner, they'll have him calm down, they'll, they'll have him focused, not doing anything silly early. But at 27, it's time to take this chance. And here is the European and Commonwealth Super Bantamweight Champion, Isham Pickering, leaving his dressing room. Doesn't he look confident? But what a reception he's about to get. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Newark. It's Isham, the King of Sting, Victory! A hostile and full 
volatile atmosphere that will seem an early Halloween fright night for new and skillful and much respected operator Isham Pickering. But he's recently dealt with thousands of screaming Spaniards in Madrid to take out their hope, Miguel Manon and Jim, he should have the experience at 29 to deal with the cauldron here. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. And I think at 29, he's showing the best form of his life. He's a double champion. He's already held the British title and given that up. So I'm pretty sure he feels he is well far in advance and ready to domestically. And I'm sure he'll be very confident of going home tonight with three titles. Hugely awaited, and this is why. Look at how close these statistics are. Hunter is younger and does have the height advantage, both nicely inside the 8 10 limit. He'll be looking to keep Pickering on the outside. Pickering has the edge in speed, the edge in years boxed. Rounds and fights, knockout, not much between them. It looks a long distance affair, but who's going to win it? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event. And there is standing room only. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the Borough Hall here in Hartlepool. Barry Hearn from Matron Sport in association with Tommy Gilmore proudly presents for your entertainment 12 rounds of boxing for the British Commonwealth and European Super Bantamweight Championship. Sponsored here by PokerMillion.com for a great game of online poker. It's a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us live and exclusive here on Sky Sports. It's Friday Fight Night. All the officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board to control our supervisor, Mr. Charlie Giles. Steward in charge, Mr. Fred Potter. Area representative is Mr. John Jarrett. Our Chief Inspector is Mr. Reg Long. Our timekeeper at the bell is Mr. Arnold Bryson. Our three scoring judges at ringside, all from England. Richie Davis, Mark Green, and Mr. Ian John Lewis. The referee in charge of the action from Wellingborough is Mr. John King. They are the officials. And here are the contestants. Introducing to you, firstly, I'm fighting out of the red corner wearing the camouflage trunks. Weighing in at eight stone nine pounds, ten ounces. He's undefeated. 23 contests, 22 wins. Nine inside the schedule distance and one draw. Coming to the ring as the undefeated, reigning and defending British. Super Phantom White Champion from Hartley Paul, Michael Hunter! <laughs> and a the ring fighting out of the blue corner wearing the red and black trunks. Weighing in at 8 stone, 9 pounds, 11 ounces. With a 31 fight record. 29 wins, 12 inside the schedule distance and only 3 defeats. He is the reigning and defending Commonwealth and European Super Bantamweight Champion from Newark, where he is known as Isham, the King of Steam, Pickery. So, sports fans and Sky Sports fans here on Friday Fight Night, it's 12 rounds of boxing for the British, the Commonwealth, and the European Super Bantamweight Championship. Right, you both received instructions in the dressing room. Do not want to expect of both of you. Shake hands, come out boxing. Amazing noise, intensity for this fascinating, much talked about clash that's been bubbling for the last couple of years in Britain and tonight becomes reality. Two of our finest lighter boxers of recent times, two stylistically different technicians, and two men with it all still to prove.
Isham Pickering here in the red and black, putting his European and Commonwealth eight stone ten belts on the line and starting a marginal favourite against the British champion Michael Hunter, who uh, one or two in the trade believe will cause the upset. He's got the home advantage. Pickering won't worry about that. It's just another great matchup. Yeah, and Pickering has surprised me. He, he's trying to make the early running coming forward and he's walked on to several leads already. This is not the Isham Pickering I expected to see. I thought we'd see him cagey. I thought he'd try to force some mistakes from the less experienced challenger, but he's committing himself and he's getting him pinned already. Usually very careful. Likes to have a good look, Isham Pickering. But this fight has been on the cards for two or three years now. They have utmost respect for each other and they have studied tape after tape. Both camps have. Well, this is a very positive start from Hunter. I thought maybe we'd take him a round or two to find some confidence. But he's finding the target already. He seems to have settled quicker than Pickering. Whipped himself into the shape of his life on the beaches here in Hartlepool. And the action warms up very, very quickly. Pickering's work improving a little bit now. Most felt it will be the tenacity, uh, willpower and gameness of Hunter who walks One, into a shot two, straight away three, inside the opening four, two minutes and five, is flawed and five, hurt five, and a beautiful five, punch picked by Isham Pickering. He has been hurt there Adam because it took quite a few seconds to get his senses back together again. See this trouble here. And Pickering sensing this dramatic start as he comes closer, whipped in the punches. That was out of the blue. That was certainly out of the blue. That's what you're worried about, a less experienced fighter. And Hunter just had a positive start. He was doing well, but just dropped his concentration and paid the penalty. He seems to have in his head cleared now. He's getting himself back into things, but he's just been looking to survive here. He's well lost around now because of the knockdown. Just settle down, get back to the corner, get the head cleared. A confident shaker and breaker, and a positive fast start from Isham Pickering. Look at these punches. Well, well, well. Hunter smiles, but he realises he's in the fight of his life here. Well, just the, the, the worst start imaginable for young Hunter, just when he was finding his confidence. Bang, left hook, bang on the chin. And you can see it took quite a few seconds to get his head together to think what to do next. Because that was a beautiful left hook. His legs has gone from under him. Eyes are looking glazed, he's looking down at the floor. He took quite a few seconds to get his head together thinking, here, I better get myself back up here, get back into things. Just purely down to lack of experience, but I tell you, that was a beautiful punch. Disastrous start. But uh, quickly, what I'm sure we're looking for an early night now. Orders, 10 seconds. They've got so much work into this. Pickering might have had the nightmare reception, but it is Hunter that's had the nightmare start. How will he react to it? But there's no point standing off against Isham Pickering. Hunter has to be the one, he has to take some chances. Can't worry about missing punches because you can't be precise against Pickering. But just get that chin down a little bit lower and start getting some punches off. Their tactics are work right. Plenty of punches, using the jab, maybe a weapon against a Brendan Ingle trained fighter, but the sharpness with Isham Pickering. Well, this is, these are the right tactics. He has to draw Pickering into a war, but he wants that chin right down onto the chest. Doesn't want the repeat of that left hook in the first round. 
So you have to take Pickering's smoothness away from him. And that's what Hunter's trying to do now. Entice him into battle. Draw him in. He's got that height. He's physically strong. Michael Hunter. Great start. Oh, left hook from Pickering. Hunter walked into it. Saves on a shot. Down for the second time. Looks at his corner. And the difference in class is beginning to tell. Yeah, big problems for Hunter. The, the only two times the Pickering has landed, cleaned him with the left hook, he scored the knockdowns. Hunter bravely rallying. But he's always showed strong resistance in the past and he has never faced anything like this sort of a beginning. Yet yeah, we just have to start wondering, is Hunter good enough? Does he have experience at this level? Pickering, we have to say, is world class, deserves his world ratings. And it is looking a different class to Hunter at the moment. Hunter's doing the right things, but they're just not paying off for him. Beautiful from Pickering, in and out, and making Hunter miss. This is the third defence of his European and Commonwealth grounds against Hunter's third of the British. Is that the difference here? Added problem for Hunter, his power has not troubled Pickering in the slightest. Pickering has come through everything that he's got and hurting Hunter every time he lands cleanly. He's becoming a little bit messy at the moment. Look, looks to the corner for advice, Hunter, but he's been caught in a thunderstorm here in front of his home supporters. Tries to come on at the end of the second, but he's been down twice. To this. Yeah, well, a couple of many disasters for Hunter, but all you can do, you see, I got again caught a bit bang on the chin each time. I mean, there is no disgrace going on the floor from these punches because they're so precise, bang on the chin, and really powerful shots. All Hunter can say now is, I've taken his best, I'm still in there, and he finished the round very well. So all you can do is pick up the pieces and go about doing what he's doing now, try to drag Pickering into a wall and seconds. keep that chin protected. Second out, round three. Triple title cracker on the cards. Some felt it would be a chess match, a battle of wits, but we've already had some intense action that we thought would take much longer to develop. Isham Pickering Two knockdowns in his favour in the first two rounds, and again, Jim going for that left hook. Well, every time it's landed cleanly, it's caused big problems for Hunter. So he knows he has the answer here. Just trying now to find the target. Hunter again doing the right thing, initiating the attacks, not giving Pickering time to set himself. Hunter has never lost in his five-year professional career. Pickering has been beaten three times, albeit one was a complete robbery against him. Actually, Pickering looking a little bit messy here. See, Pickering's never all that comfortable coming forward. The referee wants the whole act tidied up. But I think Hunter will be quite happy here. This is the kind of fight he needs. A smooth boxing match is definitely going to come off second place. So this is the action he's looking for. Grinding his way in, Michael Hunter. Determination, ambition, 
are plenty. He's worked so long and so hard for this, the former bricklayer from the city of Hartlepool. Well, again, he has taken away Pickering's smoothness, but the trouble is, a couple of times he's done that before, he's walked on to the left hook. He has to commit himself to be successful, but that's when he's punished, when he makes the mistake. Over a year and a half younger Hunter, a bit fresher. Messi around. Yeah, but this is all to the good for Hunter, because he's keeping the tempo, he's keeping the punches, he hasn't really taken anything cleanly in this round. Again, this is the kind of fight he needs if he's to be successful tonight. Nice little double from Hunter there. Good combination. And Pickering just uh, a touch more ragged in the third. I mean, this is a fairly exhausting pace for both men. But I'm sure Pickering will not be comfortable with this type of fight. Mentor Brendan Ingle. You booked him perfect. You booked him perfect. So you've had him down and will come again. Them shots. You're boxing perfect, says Dominic. Well, I don't think so because at no time whatsoever in that third round did Pickering look comfortable. No disasters for Hunter in that round, and he got plenty of punches off. Maybe a little confidence builder, but he has to keep the the tempo the same. Can't allow Pickering to dictate the pace here. 32nd fight in almost a decade of professional boxing for Isham Pickering from Newark. He's had his ups and downs. He was blown away in a world bantamweight title fight in 72 seconds by Maurizio Martinez, but he's rebuilt and uh, he's earned a lot of respect in the trade. But that's what Michael Hunter is looking to earn tonight. Again, Pickering not really looking comfortable here. Hunter working. Will he get that jab going? Trying to smother Pickering's skills. Hunter has to get more punches off. He's trying to be precise with the jab, but he's asking for trouble. Throwing single punches against Pickering is where he's going to be countered. This is scrappy looking action, but this is what it has to do. Throw Pickering into a brawl. Tries to turn it into a dog fight. Classy left hand to the body from Pickering. Did it again. Bit of a wince from Hunter. Living up to the hype, isn't it? It certainly is that the referee's trying to tidy things up here, but Hunter, that's the last thing he wants. This is the kind of fight he needs. This is not a smooth boxing contest. He would definitely come in second place there. So his tactics are right. I just don't know if he's the experience to carry them through. I'd like to see the referee. I mean, I mean there's nothing really cynical going on here. It's a little bit untidy, but I'd prefer to see John Keane just let him go on with things a bit more. Look at this from Michael Hunter, his faithful who've waited for a big, big night like this for so long on their feet, egging him on. 
See, this is what it has to do. Pick his moments to go to work, but when he does, let the punches flow. Don't look to land single precise jabs. Pick your moments, but let go four, five, and six punches. Good little spell here from Hunter. Attempting to make Pickering trade. Pickering missing a lot in this round. He still looks the physically the stronger, but he doesn't look the least bit happy with the style of fighting he's been forced into here. Intriguing this not is it about let's get straight to Spencer Oliver and Nigel Wright with Ed Robinson. Is Michael Hunter back in this fight? Yeah, he's certainly come back in the last couple of rounds. The start of the fight, I think he was thinking with his heart and not his head. He was a bit reckless, got caught by a couple of silly left hooks. It seems to have woke him up in the last couple of rounds. I've had him winning the last couple of rounds, so I think he's definitely back in the fight. Nigel, how has Hunter managed to come back from those punches? So devastating in the first two rounds. Yeah, it could have been over for him early, but it seems to get them out of his system. And he's really picked up that I've given the last two rounds, he's coming on strong. Are the danger signs for Ishan Pickering then? Yeah, I think there should be. Uh, Michael's strong, he's going to keep coming, and hopefully he can keep the pace going, and Ethan Pickering might start tiring. Spencer, what's your prediction now? Yeah, I think that if, if Hunter now just uses his, uses his head and not his heart and just settles down, he can win the fight, he's just got to apply the pressure. Second down, round five. Fascinatingly poised. Pickering's early two knockdowns, 10-8 rounds, but Hunter, Jim, right back in it. Yeah, and I think the main thing, Hunter has regained his confidence, he has that left hook again, but he's taken this one better. He's got the tactics right, he's letting the punches flow, picking his moments when to attack. There he goes, that's exactly what's needed, single punches are no good against Pickering, this is ideal. Clusters from Hunter, strong right hands, not a massive hitter, nine inside the distance, but he's started to shake Isham Pickering ever so slightly. And the good news, he's been caught cleanly a couple of times in this round, but he's taken the shots, he seems to be warming to the task, the adrenaline's flowing, so the same punches that floored him early may not have the same effect. Caught so cold with those left hooks at the beginning that Michael Hunter is beginning to get into a groove and use those tactics of throwing so many punches. I mean, he's got a jerky rhythm, but he's difficult to fight. That's what he has to do, but Pickering still, he's lost that comforting look, that confident look. He's trying to take it to Hunter now, which is a good plan. He wants to get Hunter onto the back foot if he possibly can, but that's not his natural style of boxing. The fans are starting to believe. Well, Pickering is the one at this moment who has that unhappy look on his face. He does not like this kind of action. Again, he lands the punch, but no problem from Hunter. Left hook from Hunter, trying to back Pickering up into his own corner. Do you think he's physically stronger, Hunter? Well, Pickering looked physically stronger, but I think he looks as though he's struggling with the pace. Pickering is the one up close who wants to clinch, he doesn't want to exchange punches up close. He does not like this. I thought Hunter would have a problem catching Pickering cleanly to the head, but that's not the case. Pickering's defences are poor. Not comfortable with this style of fight doesn't quite know what to do here. Are the camouflage trunks out for Michael the Hunter with his uh, whirling dervish type of style? Looks like he won't be denied. Wants this, wants this badly. And he is the one in this round who looks to be in the driving seat. He's living in the last one in most of these exchanges. It's a close round, but he's the one who looks but more in control.
was over. Round two, he thought was over. No, no. I told him, I come for this. I come for this, my dude. Now listen, don't start getting all the confidence. Pay him all the respect. And when he's rolling and rolling, let him do something. And then when he's done it, former light middleweight. And uh, frenetic trainer Neil Fannin. He's got his boy in shape, hasn't he? Yep, and I think Hunter has shown a lot of character. I mean, a couple of disasters finding himself on the floor. With beautiful left hooks, but he's come through that. He's put it behind him. He's forgotten all about it, and he's really performing now. Packed to the rafters here in the Barra Hall. Famous old venue since the 1860s. And Michael Hunter's aiming to make it a night. They will not forget in the northeast by capturing the European and Commonwealth belts from the talented switch hitter Ishan Pickering, who started so well, but just has been drawn in, and it's given the Hunter supporters some hope. Pickering trying to change tactics now, trying to outsmart Hunter, trying to keep things at long range, draw little mistakes from him. He's trying to box and move, bundles Hunter down. John Keane says no knockdown. Yeah, Pickering trying to slow things down a little bit now. Backing off, trying to use the ring. Trying just to leave Hunter's punches falling short. Well, Hunter seems to be the one getting told off all the while, but a lot of the time Pickering is the one who's holding up up close. Hunter maybe just approaching his peak. British title level last 18 months, but Isham Pickering had his British featherweight title way, way back. His first shot in 98. So he has that experience, Jim. Yeah, and he's using it in this round. He's not allowing Hunter to get set to come out there. The multiple punch attacks. Hunter can only get single punches off. Pickering is dealing with those, just confusing him a little bit with his movement and popping the jabs out. Not dramatic stuff to watch, but fairly effective and at the same time giving himself a little breather. Hunter trying everything, especially when Pickering is close, throwing all sorts of shots, trying to land even if some hit the gloves. Well, we're into the last minute here. That this is what Hunter really wants to try and make a mark. Because he spent the first couple of minutes really missing the target. Pickering trying to change things. Obviously didn't like the type of action he was been drawn into. Trying to come up with something different now. A lot more movement. Box and move tactics. More Brendan Ingle than he was two or three rounds ago. But yeah, when well, he get drawn in again, though? I have Pickering stealing this round, but I tell you, he does not have that look of confidence that he had earlier. It looks to me as though he sees this has been a long, hard struggle, and he's just trying to nick a couple of rounds without exerting himself. Okay, so. Saturday, that is Saturday, November the twenty sixth. It's Ricky Hatton against Carlos Mousa, a special event coming to Sky Box Office. Corners, 10 seconds. This is proving pretty special too. We're through halfway. It is indeed Ten Paul down. long Nine awaited. Seven. And living up to expectations. Good trade fight. The camouflage trunks and the black and green of the 27-year-old Michael Hunter, who is... Uh,
putting some of these rounds back, Jim, but you gave the last to Ishan Pickering. Yeah, I thought he stole the last, but you can see the disastrous rounds one and two. I mean, both two-point rounds, they give himself a mountain to climb, but he's, he's, back, he's heading back up that mountain. He's got himself right back into things here. Shown real grit, heart, desire to pick himself up off the floor twice in front of his home fans. A bit disjointed from Pickering that. Yeah, but I think he felt he wanted to make an impression again. Didn't so, work now, he's on the back foot once again. And maybe a cut somewhere for Pickering. Left eye, possibly. We'll get a closer look at that. But there's some damage to the European and Commonwealth champion. And that has spurred Hunter on as both men trade. I'm not sure if it's on the nose, it looks to me on the bridge of the noses. Left hand causing the nose to bleed, possibly something inside the left eye, but there is blood damage for Ishan Pickering. Well again, Hunter has Pickering fighting the kind of fight he does not like. He's looking to, to clinch up close now. Just backing off there, Pickering. Hunter is really showing character tonight. I wasn't sure he was ready for this step up, but he's ready, he is well ready. Dabbing the nose, Pickering. Coming off that impressive win over in Spain. But he's up against somebody that just has this willpower. Extraordinary. Remi he, reminds me of Paul Ingle, that sort of tenacity. Yeah, yeah, but the amount of punches he's throwing, maybe not the accuracy that Paul Ingle had. But again, Pickering looking very, very uncomfortable. Almost the first one to back off. Hunter turning up the heat here in the seventh round. And suddenly, Pickering is asked questions. Can he live with this intensity? And, ag and again, Hunter is able to come through Pickering's punches. This is the first time I can see real serious problems for Isham Pickering. He needs to find the power to knock some of the confidence out of Hunter's work. And he can't seem to do that. Gripping the canvas. And Michael Hunter raises his arms. A big, big round for the British champion. They work on the bridge of the nose from this. Bad round for Pickering. Yeah, terrible round for Pickering. I mean, he's looked uncomfortable in a few of the rounds. I mean, he looked really out of things there. He tried to turn things around a couple of times during that round. Hunter come right through his punches, which he wasn't able to do in the early stages. He's really won to the task. Things are really swung in Hunter's favour now. He's landed more now, Hunter. Have a look at that. We just have to remember that the disastrous, the two knockdowns to begin with, so that really gave Pickering an excellent start. Hunter can't wait to get back into action again. John Keane, remember, doesn't score. There are three judges at ringside now. And uh, after that big, big start for Isham Pickering, Michael Hunter is closing the gap and closing it fast. Well, if Pickering wants to win this fight on the back foot, he's going to have to do it in a positive manner. And with the amount of punches that Hunter throws, it will not be easy to look good on the back foot. Pickering ranked seventh by the WBC, sixth by the IBF. Fringes of a world title shot. Cannot afford to lose this at this stage of his career. Again, he's trying to slow things down. The Hunter's probably doing the right thing. Start steady, finish the round strongly just to impress the judges. Draw. Good right hand leap from Hunter. Having been hurt himself 
in the first couple, he is now inflicting the stronger punches on Pickering. And Pickering is the one making the mistakes now. Punches missing, falling short and stumbling after the punches. Rather a jaded look at his corner now, Ishan Pickering. He's caught him in the sort of brutal battle that Hunter must have dreamt of. See, Pickering is never in this style of fight. He's a smooth operator, he makes people miss, punishes mistakes. This is not the kind of action. I think the start he got, I think he felt he had the power to stop Hunter. That hasn't worked, and now he's beginning to struggle. Cracking left hook from Michael Hunter, a throwback sort of fighter. He's catching Pickering far more than he did in the first three or four rounds. Yeah, but I think the most important thing is he's taking what Pickering has now and coming through it. And his own punches are flowing now and he's finishing every round stronger. Which in this kind of fight is really ominous for Pickering. Pickering tries to barge Hunter off. But the uh, Hartlepool super bantamweight came right through him. This has swung. This has swung in a big way. Just off balance there, Pickering. But Hunter is building on that. What a finish to the eighth. Oh, beautiful technique there from Hunter. Bob and Reuben coming out of the crowds with punches. He is looking the man now. Chopping, pickering apart. And listen to this noise. Pickering now. I had him in front, but the thing is, the fight has swung drastically against him. He's stumbling all over the place, his balance is gone, and with his balance, his power is also gone. He's making mistakes, he's been punished for those mistakes, and we saw a beautiful bit of technique from Hunter just towards the end of the round. And look how he's finishing these rounds, really taking Ballers, charge. 10 seconds. Hunter is dominating rounds now, which Pickering didn't really do, even in his good stage. Really enthralling. People were questioning whether Michael Hunter could rise to the challenge, whether he was good enough to compete at this level. No knockdown. But he, he so wants to get in and continue with the intense heat, Jim. There, again, Pickering trying to come forward, but that is not his strength. Makes mistakes, pinned with the right hand lead. First two rounds, Michael Hunter looked outclassed. Now, he is possibly in front. We don't know what the judges are saying. They're close, some of these rounds. Yeah, but I think the big difference is that Hunter really looks in charge when he's having a good round. Pickering has stolen a couple of the rounds as he's trying to do again here. He's the experience. He knows he has to drop the pace a little bit, but he can use his skills and his experience. What about stamina down the stretch? Pickering's been 12 rounds twice, Hunter only once. Hunter complaining now, which is never a good sign in this kind of fight. He's having problems finding Pickering. Pickering again has altered the tactics. Using the ring, trying to confuse Hunter. Summoning those reflexes. Trained on the uh, Winkerback Hill in Sheffield. Such a dedicated and honest fighter, Isham Pickering. He's got to pull this out of fire. Well, again, he's altered his tactics, trying to confuse Hunter. 
So far, he's stealing around again. That's the difference between the two, but they all count the same in the final scorecard. He's using his experience here. It's a little dip in Hunter's work rate here. Is he beginning to struggle now? Has he used up too much steam? All those punches he's thrown, Michael Hunter. And a couple of body shots there. A warning, Isham Pickering is still very much in this. Which way will it twist next? See, Pickering has taken the, the intensity out of Hunter's work in this round. Has it allowed him to get settled? I mean, it's not vintage stuff, it's not uh, championship boxing, but it's, it, at least it's effective. Finishing the round, both of them with punches. As Pickering just got himself back in front with this. Good shot from Hunter, but back comes Pickering. And again, the action picks up at the end of the night. Let's get over to Spencer Oliver and Nigel Wright for their predictions. Well, Spencer, how are you scoring it? Well, I've got Pickering just winning the last round. It'll all level up until then, so I've got Pickering just one up at the moment. But that could quite easily be the other way. With the first two knockdowns, that really did swing it in Pickering's way. But Hunter's come back so well. And this fight really is all, all to fight for in these last three rounds. Nigel, there's an incredible atmosphere here. Will that spur Michael on over the last couple of rounds? It'll spur them both on because it'll make Asian Pickering think he's got to beat them in front of all these fans. But again, it'll merge Michael on as well. Asian found to be excellent that round and come back strong. So it's, it's getting interesting now. It could be close. Spencer, it's still all to play for. It is all to play for. Hunter's just got to keep applying that pressure, and I think that he could cause an upset here, and I think he could win the fight. He's just got to keep his head and apply that steady pressure. Can't, let Pick uh, can't allow Pickering to get into that rhythm. Thank you. All still to fight for. And Jim, do the judges go for aggression ten. or punch picking? Well, but we have three officials, so we'll get a balanced view. But, uh, I thought that was a smart round from Pickering. He gave himself a breather. We were at the same time. Nicked a little round, just stole the round, got another one in the bank. I have him one point up at the moment. So we'll see. Is Hunter tiring or can he raise the pace again? But he must raise the tempo as he did in the, the middle rounds. This super bantamweight seesaw. Pickering with the fast and positive start and the knockdowns hunter coming back big seventh and eighth and now both of them are finding success late on well full credit to pickering he's trying to drive himself forward here so again this is the type of fight hunter should be enjoying a oh, beautiful punch combination from hunter It swung this way, then that. And it has been the type of affair that we really hoped, in reality, it would live up to. So close quarter one, Pickering not looking to clinch in that exchange. But Hunter, for me, coming off better in these exchanges. Heart, energy. What's left in the tank? Both men have trained so hard. Pickering's what's untidy, cupping little punches up close. The quality shots in this round coming again from Hunter. Lovely uppercut from Hunter. Again, Pickering trying to spoil. Accuracy from Hunter. That left hook. Big, big shots. Just a lot of more power than what Hunter needed there because these punches are landing cleanly. Pickering in big trouble here. 30 seconds left in the 10th. Can Pickering get through this round? Pickering's legs looked a little bit unsteady as he backed off there. Sheer, dogged, determination, desire, willpower, and now accuracy 
from Michael Hunter. Well, quite often in a fight, Adam, there's one round that decides things. I think this may be that round. Who can come back the stronger? That was a big round for Hunter, but whoever can come back from this the stronger. Look at the crowd now, full of voice. And to add to the drama, there was a cut on we Hunter's left eye. Here. It's all happening. Well, I have them dead level once again. So I think that is the round that will decide this fight. Pickering does not look happy, does not look as though he's enjoying things. Hunter went back to his corner smiling because he's just had a massive round. Things are looking good for Michael Hunter at this stage. I have them level, as I say, but the, again, the action has swayed dramatically in his favour. Pickering's punches are scuffling, spoiling type punches, whereas Hunter is landing quality shots. Hunter raises his arms, and there's a tired, jaded, despondent look. The fresh legs of Isha Pickering suddenly not there, and there's two rounds to go. And Hunter is totally in charge at this point. And he started the round with a solid punch straight away, putting Pickering on the back foot. Pickering again trying to, to do what he's done a couple of times, steal rounds on the back foot, circle move, but it's not working for him here, Hunter getting close. Wins over Mark Payne, Sean Hughes, Mark Callahan for the British title, but this, the step up in level, and also, if Hunter wins the European Commonwealth belts, he gets a Lonsdale belt to keep. What a night it could be! Pickering doesn't look to have anything left, he's never enjoyed the action from start to finish. There's just a feeling all the way through that Hunter's work has been better. The knockdowns gave him a mountain to climb, the couple of rounds that Pickering has been stealing, but the feeling you get is that Michael Hunter deserves to win this fight tonight. he's responded to what happened at the beginning in front of these people. Well, as I said earlier, Adam, he has shown real character tonight, a disastrous start, but he is the one driving the punches out, Pickering trying to do that, but he's not used to this kind of battle. Low blow there from Pickering, but no complaint from Hunter. No complaint that time. Just a punch after John Keane tried to split them, but he's done so little, the referee, and that tells you something. It's been really good action. They're both very tired, but Pickering is looking exhausted. These are tired-looking punches, tired-looking legs. He's stumbling forward into punches. Things really looking good for Michael Hunter at this moment. Pickering only 12 knockouts on his record. And Hunter is really going to work, although he gets a counter in. The new fighter, he needs the big punches now. Well, I think he, had, he needed that punch just to get Hunter under control. Almost caused another knockdown, which would may just have made the difference in this fight. I think that punch has taken quite a bit out of Hunter. But Hunter's probably done enough work in the first two and a half minutes to win the round. Gulp of air from Hunter, clinging on to Pickering this time. In another tantalising round here in Hartlepool. Saying, don't take any chances. 
What about the other corner? Well, I think he's going to have to take chances for the first time I have Hunter up. What they're telling him. Right, and come on, you know what you're doing. Use your brain. Use your footwork. Tie him up. He's with the brain. He's on tie him up. The Hartlepool fans have had a triple title treat served up for them. But will their local hero come away with the spoils? This is how you've got it, Jim. Yeah, for and the first time, for minutes. the first time I have Hunter in front. And the feeling, as I said earlier, Hunter deserves to win this. He's given so much. He has gone out and won the rounds. Great his teeth and got on with the job. Pickering has stolen a few rounds, has got a couple of knockdowns. So what a fight this has been. So much energy expended between the pair. They've grinded away. It's meant so much to both. But the feeling with the home advantage Hunter has been willed on to do something special. Well, he has produced a special performance. Disastrous start. He's come back from that, shown the grit, the determination, and the real character that's required at this level. And he's still the one who wants to pick up the action. Pickering's still the one looking to take a breather. Good right hand from Hunter. The Feeney brothers at ringside. The Hartlepool faithful all here. It will be one of the biggest nights in half a century in boxing for this northeast seaside town. Pickering knows how close it is. He's trying to summon something, but he is so ragged here. They are both exhausted. Good right hand from Hunter. He's still the one. With a cleaner, better quality punches. Look how tired Pickering's legs look. Mustering up courage, Ethan Pickering. But it doesn't seem to have worked in the last half of this fight. Listen to the singing, Jim. And Hunter still looks the one who's prepared just to dig that a little bit deeper. Pickering was not expecting this kind of battle and he's found it difficult to cope with it. Without the two knockdowns against him, you'd have no doubt that Michael Hunter would win this by a mile. But, but he's had to do it the hard way. Yeah, this one will on my card, Ali. He's winning this round and for me, it's two points up. Really looking forward to seeing how the judges have scored this. Last five seconds of what's been a terrific tussle for the British Commonwealth and European Super Bantamweight titles. And they believe Hartlepool feels that their champion has won the fight of his life. Unbeaten in five years, this would be his defining night, but the Ingalls raise each and pickering aloft, and we just don't know yet. But mathematically, I have him winning it. But beyond that, sometimes you look at a fight and you think, who deserves to win tonight? And that's Michael Hunter in my book. Richie Davis and Mark Green are right alongside us, two of the judges, and they don't know. They don't know who's won. That's how close the rounds were. They don't know how they've scored it. Well, there you can see how I've scored it. Hunter by two points, turning it all the way around. But the, the feeling overall is that this young man deserves it. He gave everything of himself. He wore his heart on his sleeve, didn't look for any easy ways to get the job done. Great determination, character, showed everything for me he deserves to, to, to leave with three titles tonight. How do we round this up? A seesaw swinging battle. Well, a mountain to climb. Look, it looked at this point, the Pickering fancied an early night because every time he landed his left hook, that was the result. Didn't look as though Hunter had the punch resistance to compete at this level, but straight away he started coming back at Pickering, outworking him, taking away Pickering's smoothness, 
You see in the early stages Pickering starting to look to spoil, then to look to get on the back foot and win a couple of easy rounds without committing himself, just trying to take a breather. But Hunter was always the one showing the intensity, the drive, the determination, the will to win, and I think he deserves to win. And he finished it, turned things all the way around, and my card, as you can see, two points up. Great fight, great effort. And let's have a look at these statistics. Punches thrown, 1,200 almost. The success for Hunter. Has he done it? Has he got it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your full attention? Thank you. Here on Friday Fight Night, I do believe you have just witnessed the fight of the year, and on behalf of referee John Keane, I'd like you to show your appreciation before I read the judges' scorecards. Judge Richie Davis scores a contest 112-115. Judge Ian John Lewis scores a contest 113-114. Judge Mark Green scores a contest 113-113. Therefore, your winner, and still the British champion, and the new And their biggest boxing success champion. for 53 years the since the Teddy Gardner held the British Eastern. Empire Pickering. and European titles. Michael Hunter, undefeated, triple champion and in tears. Yeah, a big and underdog, but I think just as has been done, I think the man who really wanted it most was home with the three titles tonight. Congratulations, he showed everything that you look for in a champion. Can only go on to bigger and better things. He's not ready to think about one level yet. He has three titles and he can make himself a nice few quid while he strives towards one class. Covered in belts and the fans celebrate. Close on the cards. Mark Green gave it a draw. It was that sort of an affair, but the feeling, Jim, is that the right man gets the belts tonight. Yeah, I just feel the rounds that Hunter won, he went out and won them. No question, grit his teeth and did it the hard way. Pickering boxed well, scored a couple of knockdowns, but he's gotten to a good start, but then he looked to steal a couple of rounds to coast, do things the easy way. Well, this is not an easy game. You have to be prepared to do it the hard way. Hunter made it his kind of fight, and it paid off for him. He got the result. Tenacity from Michael Hunter. How will he put this into words? Ed Robinson will try and find out. Well, Michael, Michael, a triple champion in front of your home fans. Try and sum up how you're feeling. Well, I just, it's OK. It's all right for an easy road, kids, you know what I mean, to do all this. That's another story, a Rags and Richards story later. But, uh, I take my hat off to Esam, he caught me flush in the first two rounds. I, I wasn't hurt, uh, he got me, he's a, he's a genuine world-class fighter. I just, I've got that much bottle and art to win, you know what I mean? I take some beating, I take some stopping. How did you survive those first two lockdowns and shake that off? Tell the truth about it, I'm very fit and I just shook it off like, just like a snap of a finger. You know, I'm very, very fit and I'm very strong for this weight, you know. If I do it properly, no one can beat me. I to take anyone on. Isham, no arguments with the verdict? Now, I thought I won the fight. I thought it'd be great to get through the knockdowns. I give him all the credit in the world, he's strong and durable. But hopefully it'll give me a rematch, because I, I was going to give him one if it was a good fight. It looked like it seemed a good fight. Was it a good fight? It was an incredible fight. It deserves a rematch, mate. Yeah, you can have a rematch. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? No, definitely deserves a rematch. I thought I won the fight with the first couple of rounds. I don't he's very strong that. and very fit. It'll Michael. Be, it'll have to be in a week's time because he's having two days off. All right, no problem. We'll have to do it in uh, Newark or Sheffield. Michael, no did you win that? Michael, play. did you win that on your willpower? Yeah, I did, yeah. You know, like Neil said, you know, that's what I am. I'm a brave man. You know, them shots just hit me flush on the chin. I wasn't hurt. I just stayed down for the count, as you do with experience. But I got up and I just shook it off like that. You know, he's a great champion. He's a world-class performer. But I just, I just think I've got the art and the ability and the mental ability to beat anyone at my weight, anyone. You know, all these big top names. I'll have a go with them. I'll give them a run for the money. Congratulations, both of you, on a great fight. Oh, yes, it was, Ed.
We knew they were two good men. We hoped it might be good, but we cannot have expected that. Can we have a rematch, please? <laughs> and more action to come yet. Oscar Hall and Lenny Dawes meeting in a light welterweight eliminator. Stay with us. Stansfolker.com. Have it.